exactly what we've talked about is people building a, a financially healthy business is to be able to provide some of these things, right? And to know what the costs are and health insurance is important. That's an important piece of it. Um, and that's you got to protect would... what you already have. And that's what, that's what insurance is for. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks look at it as a way to get their phys their physicals for free each year or to get the immunizations for their kids, stuff like that stuff's cheap. Health insurance companies will pay for that all day long if that's what it takes to get you to sign up. Mm -hmm. What you really want is something that is unlimited and will cover all the expenses, even if you're in for a million bucks. That way you don't lose the house, the cars, the business or anything else that you've built up over the years. You don't yeah. want to lose that. Let the insurance companies pay for those huge big ticket surgeries while you take care of the little things like the immunizations, the yearly physical. And, you know, when you got a cough and cold and you got to go in, you know, call that uh, telemedicine app. Don't worry about going to the doctor. You can take care of those things a lot of times and save so much money and yeah. then just get a catastrophic only plan. I've got one uh, and I sold this to a guy. Um, I won't spill too much information about him, but He's got like 200 doors. He owns 200 rental properties. So his his weekly income is higher than a lot of people's yearly income. He does very well. And he's like, I don't want to pay much and I can deal with whatever the deductible is. So run it up to the highest possible thing that you've got. And so for the high net worth individuals, I've got one that's like 25,000 out of pocket per person. You don't pay much per month, but if something major happens, yeah, the insurance company's on the hook for the big bills. You cover the first 25 grand. Now that is a very, very small subset of people I work with. <laughs> right. Very small. But for them, I have a product. And everybody right. from them on down to people that want like a either a zero dollar deductible or I think the next step up is two thousand five hundred dollar deductible. So there's there's something, there's something for everybody out there. Yeah. You gotta have somebody who knows what they are, where to find them, how to sign up, that type of thing. Right. And I think it's important too, that people understand like what they can financially. And I hate the word afford. So I really try yeah. to not use it, but I think it's a word that everybody understands. But I think part of it is, you know, and this is why I talk about building a financially healthy and financially sustainable business is knowing what you need, like how, because here's the thing, people we see it all the time in the business group we're in. I'm not going to name it here because I want to be real careful, you know, of what I say, nothing negative, but you, you see it all the time. It's focus on more income, more income, more sales, grow your income, grow your income and growing your income. Isn't going to solve any of the problems unless you have a system, unless you know what it is that you need to be making. Right. And you know what your Bingo. expenses yep. are. And part of those expenses, I believe are looking at what your investments are. Like as a business owner, you should be, contributing to some type of investment accounts, whether it's retirement specific or to help later on, it should be covering your, your health insurance, you know, your benefits. Right. Yeah. But so many times people as small business owners, and we were talking about this a little bit ago, the economy's hit a lot of people really hard. And so what some of the things that they're going to cut, or they feel like they can't quote unquote afford health insurance is one of them. And yeah. so knowing numbers, getting quotes, knowing how much you actually need to be making in your business to cover these things. Cause most people in fact, do not know what that number is, um, which blows my mind. Um, just to help get them off this hamster wheel of yeah. like, Oh, I need another, you know, 10 sales so I can pay my expenses from last month, but Oh, I really need to get health insurance. And then what, what happens? Murphy shows up at your front door you end up with, you know, a surgery or you've got a broken arm, right? And then you're like, now I'm screwed. Now I yeah. have no idea. Now I can't work. Now I've got no income coming in. I haven't protected myself and I don't have insurance. So that's like quadruple, at least quadruple yeah. ramp. Uh, and that's a, that's a tough hole to dig out of. Um, I've put together a few things for people that, uh, especially the younger folks in their 20s and 30s, they're looking at maybe two to 300 bucks a month, maybe 400 at most. And it's got stuff built in for all of that stuff that covers critical illness. If you get really sick and it's mm -hmm. a covered critical illness, uh, or if you have an accident and you have a little bit of accident disability built in just enough, by the way, to cover your health insurance so that that continues on for up to a year while you're still dealing with the injury that you have. So those types of things, you can build a pretty inexpensive plan around uh, those protections 
and you don't have to worry as much. I mean, it just takes all of the guesswork out. In fact, if you're having a really, really good month in sales, these things are cheap enough. You can pay for a full year off of one good sale, depending on what kind of things you sell. And you're like, oh, I don't know. I'm $3,000 is a lot of money. Yeah, wait till that bill hits from the accident and you don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. You think 3000 is a lot? That's barely getting you in the door. <laughs> when right. you're talking about hospital bills, mm -hmm. try adding a few zeros. So let the insurance company pay those big things. You just pay the small things. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, cash flow, I think, gets in a way from a lot of people. And, and they feel like, you know, again, going back to the afford, it's because they don't understand their cash flow. And, and I think what I'd like to try and get across is creating a strategy for businesses, business owners, a financial strategy that they know that they know what is truly important and what protections do they need to have in place because it goes so much deeper than just how much money you're making. And I think that that's, yeah. that's what we hear all the time is, Oh, how much did you make? Well, it actually doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Like that, that number is so far down the ladder on what actually matters um, that, that putting protections in place your, for your business is so important. And, and really looking at, you know, why are you building this business? Going, asking yourself that question. And I know this gets talked about a lot, but I don't think people really take it as, take it to the level that they need to, Ben. Because for a lot of us, I think it's to get out of kind of like the rat race. It's to really build our own dreams and not somebody else's. Um, it's more flexibility. Sometimes it feels like more freedom or we think it's going to be, we, we have this idea that we can make a lot more ourselves than we can working for somebody else. And I'm going to say that not all of that is necessarily true, but I think that that's what a lot of us believe is possible. And, and it's important to recognize why you started because that leads you into why these protections are necessary and not optional, right? They're not the ones that get put on the back burner. These are the things that for my business to run the way that I want to, and for me to get to the level that I really want to get to, these are a non-negotiable. They're yeah. not an option, right? They're not an add-on. When I start making more, I can add some of this on. These are like, these fall into the non-negotiable category when it comes to your business finances, in my opinion. Yeah, protect what you have. I mean, they say- many times that, you know, money doesn't buy happiness. All it does is fix money problems. But if you've got leaks everywhere in your business and your personal spending habits, it doesn't matter how much money you're putting into that hopper. By the time it gets back down to your bank account, it's the same amount because you're losing money along the way. Oh, I just bought a Rolls Royce. Well, good for you. That's a great way to advertise how successful you are and bring in more clients if you're in certain kind of businesses. But a Bentley would do the same thing at half the price. And a Lambo, if it's used, people don't know if that's used or not. They don't keep up with how, what Lambos look like. There are ways to do what you're doing cheaper. And there are ways to structure how you you handle your money. That's that's your department. And that's why I'm here to learn. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. And I think it's, you know, I think that we are here together because it's about providing value and helping people in the areas that we oh, see yeah. are kind of falling short and because people are busting their rears to build their businesses. Right. And they're, they're putting in so much time and effort because we believe in ourselves and we believe in this dream that we have and we should, but I think that there's a couple of gaps, right? There's a couple yeah. of missing pieces and, and, and I'm just going to throw this out there that, you know, using tools um, like QuickBooks, like a bookkeeper, uh, even a CPA, like completely relying on them. I think it's getting people into a lot of trouble. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are going to disagree with me on this, but they are tools to use. They are not systems within your business. They yeah. are tools. And if you don't understand how to use that tool and you're, you don't understand the right questions to ask, guess what? Look at so many of these big businesses out there that or even small businesses that are closing their doors that are filing bankruptcy, they used QuickBooks, they used some kind of, you know, accounting software, they used a bookkeeper. That's not going to solve your problems. Making more money isn't going to solve your problems. Businesses file bankruptcy and close their doors every single day and are making millions and millions and hundreds of thousands and even tens of thousands and billions, like 
all numbers, it doesn't matter the amount. They're closing their doors and they're filing bankruptcy. Why? Because they don't have the cash flow and they don't understand how to structure their business finances. I wish you'd been there two years ago for all the solar companies that could have stayed in business and kept on going. I mean, even the big boys are starting to see uh, them closing the doors. Uh, the folks that put all the solar panels on my own roof. Now, I was the one who sold myself the system, but all the panels on my roof, they were installed by a company called Titan. And I went with them instead of the smaller guys because they're too big to fail until they failed. Ah. Uh. So now no warranties except for those from the manufacturer. And so Titan just wiped their hands clean and said, we're going bankrupt. Sorry, guys. I uh, wish we could have given you more than 30 minutes notice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, that kind of thing happens to businesses of all sizes. And they had, I mean, many, 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 many millions of dollars coming in a month mm -hmm. and they couldn't balance their books. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I think it happens. I think it happens quicker than people realize. And, and so much of the time, what I run into is people are like, well, I'm not making much money, so I don't need to worry about it just yet. And I was like, whoa, hold your horses. This is exactly the time that you need to worry about it. You can put these in, put all of the system, create your system now. So when you are making it, guess what? Now you're making it and you can just run with it. And it's not something that you're having to dig yourself out of because there's no digging out when you first yeah. start. You're starting on a level playing field, right? And and I think that that's where a lot of people get like, I think they get stopped up and they, they're like, well, I no, I can't do that right now. Um, and I always push back. I'm like, this is literally the best time because yeah. again, you're starting on a level, you're, you're starting on flat ground. You start in a year, when you've got a gazillion dollars, and I mean, that's obviously being a little facetious with the numbers, but you, you've got so much debt, you're solely focused on working, you know, 80 hours a week, trying to sign, you know, 10, 15 clients a day. I've seen people do that, right? Because they are so overwhelmed with their businesses because they didn't put the processes in place and the systems yeah. in place. In the put those in place uh, to begin with get used to using them before you're overwhelmed with sales and responsibilities. Um, and then so that you can also, if you need to down the road, teach your assistant or virtual assistant mm -hmm. how to run those things for you. Then you can offload the systems that you built to this to the other person and then check their work occasionally. It's going to take so much less uh, work for you to do your job because you've unloaded those particular tasks to someone else. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's a good thing to get those uh, in place and learn how to use them properly when you've got the time to do so. Does it make you money right now? No, it doesn't. But <laughs> you're, you're you're playing a long game here. This is not get rich quick. This is get rich for sure. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I don't know a single person that starts a business to just say, I'm only going to be in business a year. Yeah. Like, I don't know a single person, but our thinking is that short-term thinking, right? Like, because it, it's like, I can't do this now. I don't have the time now. It's all short-term thinking instead of that long-term. Like, I started my business and I plan on being here for a very, very, very long time. And so how do I create the systems now to make that possible? Um, you know, one thing... Um, that I want to add to that too, is that when you start from the beginning and you start getting quotes and you understand what your non-negotiables are, it actually gives you such a head start because like yeah. you said, when you, when you're hiring, you know, your assistant or when you bring on employees, guess what? You already know what those premiums might be costing for, you know, say your health insurance, you already understand what those costs are. So you can, you're pre-building that into some of your pricing. You're yeah. pre-building that into your system. So when the time comes, guess what? You're not trying to figure out now, how do I financially afford to hire somebody? Oh, I've already got it built into my system. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Right. Yep. And so you're saving so much time. It's you, you want to know, know the trick to, to doing health insurance. Uh, if you want to know what a quote for good health insurance is, and this is insurance that you maybe you don't you're making good money now and you're not going to get a subsidy anymore from from uh, the healthcare.gov website and so you're paying full price you should plan uh to pay about 100 dollars uh per year of age so if you are 30 years old 
you're looking at uh well not a hundred dollars it's 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 about at a zero to your age that's what i meant to say so if you're 30 years old approximately 300 bucks a month i can maybe find cheaper but by the time you have the extras in there that you need um the ones that like cover your short-term disability critical illness dental vision stuff like that it should equal out to about your age with a zero on the end of it per person so if there's two 30 year olds in your household and you're both wanting to get insurance you're looking at around 600 bucks a month but we're talking about good insurance can you find stuff that's cheaper uh-huh right. can you find stuff that's better for the money no good insurance isn't cheap and cheap insurance isn't good you want to hit that sweet spot and <clears throat> excuse me that sweet spot is about your age with a zero on the end of it. Yeah. If I can get it cheaper, oh, I will. I want to save you money. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea of insurance. It's not to take your money. It's to make sure that when something bad happens, the you know, you pay so little of it, and the insurance company picks up the rest. We want them paying the rest, and you just have that little bit up front. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea behind it. But yeah, yeah. That you, you can you can you can average it out over your family, add up everybody's ages, and put a zero on the end of it. See, and that, that's such that's a great, trick. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great trick to use. And, and I think too, um, you know, even along those lines is, um, you know, when people are looking at their finances and looking at their situation, knowing your risk, you know, if, if yeah. you are like, yeah, I don't have, you know, I'm 45. So my husband's almost 45, he's 44. So you're, let's just say $900 a month, right? Like just based on adding the zero, let's just, let's yep. call it $900 a month. Let's say, oh man, I don't want to pay that $900 a month. That's a lot of money. I don't have it. I can't afford it. Well, you know, like all the things that people say, I would encourage you to then go and look at what your risk is. How much do you have in your peace of mind fund? Yeah. Right. If you're solely going to base your purchase right on the cheapest premium then you need to know your risk you need to know how much do you have um saved to cover those expenses as they come in you need to know mm -hmm. and listen freak accidents happen all the time but yeah. if you if you get sick and you go to the doctor six times a year and you're on prescriptions and you need x-rays because you get pneumonia let's just say you need to know that it, let's say you haven't been to a doctor in you know 10 years right those are two different people. You need to know your risk. You need to be honest with yourself uh, because, you know, again, Murphy's shown up at my door at the worst. He never shows up when it's convenient, right? He shows up when it's a really crappy time, right? When you're feeling down, when business yeah. is slow, when you've already had claims on, you know, your car insurance, like that's yeah. when this happens. And so really understanding your risk and knowing what can you actually afford. Um, there's there's one way that uh, a lot of folks have been successful at lowering their monthly premium. And that's just getting a higher deductible and higher max out of pocket. For those that don't read up on insurance as much as I do, deductible is the first amount that you pay all the time on your health insurance before they really kick in and start paying for stuff. And a lot of times those numbers, like on a, on a marketplace Obamacare plan, you're looking at a lot of times anywhere between 2,500, which is extremely good and almost you never, never find that to around 9,000. That's pretty typical $9,000. You're going to pay that first. And then there's a little bit after that, uh, the co-insurance. And uh, for most folks, it's usually a 60, 40, 70, 30 split. And what that means is the next ten or twenty thousand dollars of expenses, you're paying a small portion of it, say thirty percent, and they're paying seventy percent. And so, the higher that amount is, the lower they can they can charge you per month. So going back to that uh, guy that had you know two hundred doors, he already owned so many rental properties. He had a really really healthy savings account. Mm -hmm. He can handle a twenty five thousand dollar max out of pocket per person. If they both got into a car accident at the same time and it was major and they needed all, you know, multiple broken bones and contusions and lots of x-rays and lots of time in the ICU, we're looking at a total of 50,000 that they're going to pay before the insurance picks up the other million <laughs> that they're going to be billed for. Right. It just depends. I always ask people, okay, well, how much, how healthy is your savings account? So you don't have to tell me the exact number. 
<clears throat> but you can tell me, would it be comfortable to have a five thousand dollar deductible, or seventy five hundred, or ten thousand, or fifteen thousand? What's the comfortable number for you? Let's go with whatever that number is comfortable, and then we'll look and see what the premium is. And if the premium goes down because you have a good healthy savings account and you end up not using it for years, that's saving you a lot of money. But right. it depends on how healthy that savings account is. Um, a lot of folks call it the emergency fund, which it can be used for emergencies. But like you said, it's more of a peace of mind fund. You've got money set aside for peace of mind. You hope yeah. there's never an emergency. You try to stay out of trouble, but right. it's that case you do. Right. Well, and, and, you know, so my husband and I just is, um, you know, a side note, we've got our peace of mind fund, right? But we also now have created, so we've got our HSA that we contribute to, and we have a separate medical fund. So we have three ways, right, to cover us should a medical, a, a major medical situation arise. Do I want to use that? Of course not, because I want my money to be working for me and earning interest and growing, you know, and all those things. But I'm also not naive enough to realize, you know, that that life is going to happen. I just don't yeah. know, right? Like it's going to happen. And so, you know, knowing your numbers, and I've shared this too, you know, because we have a high deductible plan. Um, I know what our total out of pocket for the year is in that high deductible plan. Um, yeah. it was, it, uh, it was $6,000 for just me. Family is, um, 10,000 for family. So it was just 6,000 for me. Not um, bad. I, not bad, not, not bad at all. <clears throat> um, but I knew that going into, you know, a couple of ER visits, surgery, you know, scheduled. So I already knew in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's $6,000 that I have to pay. So we need to make sure that that's in an account where we can cash flow it. Right. And we're actually choosing to cash flow, you know, the, the bills that have come in. So I'm not pulling out of even my HSA. I'm not pulling out of my medical account and I'm not pulling out of my savings. We want I to cash it. flow it. Now, not everybody is able to do that, mm -hmm. you know, no. but here again, then this is why I talk about having a system in place. So I know what our risk is and I know how to get, how to move through a situation that comes. Right. And so many people that I work with don't. So something like this, you know, happens and it throws them, they don't have the $6,000 to pay. Yeah. So causes a ton of frustration, causes a ton of overwhelm. You know, I was, I was, frankly, I was out of work for a week, you know, that that's, that's expensive income, right? Yeah. Um, as self-employed, we don't have vacation time, right? We don't necessarily have PTO, um, so we build that into our system so we can account for those things happening, but these are all, it all falls into that risk category, right? And knowing what your numbers are and knowing what you can handle versus what not, that helps you then decide what kind of a plan you need, right? And one of the risks that I think is um, important to look at, especially with your situation, because you do travel a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, there are types of people that do travel a lot for work, <clears throat> truckers, traveling nurses, I think about a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and RVers, of course. And so you're moving from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, in other words, zip code to zip code, and you're not always staying in the same state. Mm -hmm. Most health insurance plans, whether they're a group policy through work, a marketplace plan, they really only cover you around your home zip code. So about 100 miles away from your home zip code is about as far away as they want you to go and still get medical treatment. The reason is simple. They're trying to keep costs down. So they only contract doctors and hospital systems close to you. They only contract with them because they can keep the prices down with just those doctors. And uh, if you're going to travel and your health insurance is not traveling with you, that $6,000 deductible means almost nothing because now you've got a new deductible when you're out of your home zip code. It's your uh, out of network deductible and your out of network max out of pocket. And if you don't know what that is, yeah. that's about as much as a house. You might as well not have insurance, okay? <clears throat> you might as well just, um, e either you get a secondary plan that is a nationwide PPO network. PPO just stands for pick your own doctor. Preferred provider organization, pick your own doctor is what it means in <laughs> plain English. Uh, and if you're, even if you have a PPO plan, we were talking about this before we started today, 
Uh, the states of South Dakota and Iowa have two major health care systems, and they have their own PPO health insurance. But as far as I know, last time I checked, they only work in Iowa and South Dakota. They don't work anywhere else. So they're only a PPO in state inside of those hospital systems. Um, you want to make sure that if you're going to be traveling, either you supplement what you have through work or through marketplace with something that travels with you. Mm -hmm. or you scrap that completely tell your boss hey whatever you're paying towards my health insurance dump that into my paycheck <clears throat> and i'll put that towards my own private plan i've yeah. got ben he's got a ppo it's going to follow me wherever i go in in the united states and and um in our territories wherever you know, like united Healthcare, i think is a, is a great network mm -hmm. and as long as you're in with that network i think you're pretty good so that's what I would recommend in those situations. But if you are only going to be able to get, because the economy is rough right now, if your budget only allows for the work insurance, the group plan that you're on with a spouse, for example, or your own work, make sure you know what happens if you get sick or get hurt out of network. And make sure you know exactly where the lines are drawn for your network. You don't want to leave that. If it's something acute, something that's emergency, yeah, get it fixed no matter where you are. That's a no-brainer. You have to. But mm -hmm. if it's something where you know uh, the doctor says, well, it looks like you've got X, Y, Z, and that's going to require some surgery, hightail it back home, okay? <laughs> get back to your home zip code so that you can get it taken care of there. And if you can't do that, have a supplementary plan already in place so that when you do get that surgery out of network from your original plan, you've got a supplement plan that's going to at least offset some of that. Mm -hmm. A good health insurance agent should know what policies would work in those situations and it, again, it is to lower your risk of having to pay those huge bills. You pay that little amount, the insurance company picks up the rest. Yeah, the yeah. I love that. I love that. One thing that we haven't really touched on, and and um, it, this is just for my own curiosity, do you have access to any like um, high deductible plans where, where yeah. you can contribute to an HSA account? I guess that because... I don't think anyone's paying close enough attention to HSA accounts that they would say no if you wanted to create one. They're just going to take your word for it that whatever plan you have allows you to use it. Um, that is, of course, a gray area in some states. It just depends on where you live. Each state has their own laws. I have seen people take out HSAs to go along with a private health care plan. But keep in mind, private health care plans, as good as they are, they don't have to conform to the same rules and regulations as what we consider like the Obamacare, the, the marketplace plans. Mm -hmm. So because they don't conform to those, they may not actually be, uh, they may not actually qualify for HSA. Mm -hmm. They might not. Um, so what you might do instead of getting a high deductible plan, because these are pretty inexpensive plans to begin with, is to get a low deductible plan and let them deal with the bills after the after $2,500 of deductible and a little bit of max out of pocket, you know, you might be at 4,500 for the year out of pocket plus your premiums. Right. And, and they pay for the rest. Um, there are definitely some benefits to having an HSA. What I would recommend is um, <clears throat> we talk about a specific state that you're in. Then you give me a little while to go ahead and talk to uh, some other um, professionals in that line of work that they create the HSA accounts. I don't do that myself. So I want to talk with someone to see what they've done in the past with these plans to make sure that it fits in with the current laws and regulations. They change all the time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what I know might be right for Colorado last year might not be right for this year. You've got to do it again. You've got to go look everything up again. Right. Uh, I went to, My four-year degree in college was paralegal. Uh, I had planned to become an attorney at some point. And um, so I've got a lot of experience looking up obscure laws and regulations <laughs> and talking to people about them as if I know what I'm talking about. But it's really about just finding out what works this year and what doesn't work this year right. and applying that to your situation. Okay. So yeah, I was just all the time. <laughs> well, I mean, that's with anything, right? I mean, uh, laws change, regulations change. So it's always in good practice to make sure that you've got a good relationship with your insurance agent, yeah. whether that be your, your health insurance, your car insurance, your homeowners, right? Like yeah. all of these. Um, so ha to have a good relationship with them. Um, so you CPA, you know, to, to know, 
what laws and what regulations change, even filing your taxes, what you can write off, the percentage that's written off, right? Changes yeah. literally every year. And a lot of people don't know that, right? One year during COVID, I think meals, right? You could write off meals during, you know, 2020 and 2021. It was like 85% of your meals you could write off and get, you know, the, then a tax credit for that. Well, then I think- That was 20- nice. Yeah, right? That was nice. Yeah. But then what <laughs> happened? We got so used to that quote unquote, we that like 2022, yeah. and I might be a little bit off on my years. Don't quote me. I'm not a CPA, but then it went to like 25%. Right. And so you don't get as much yeah. of a tax credit or a tax break on those. And so, um, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I am not a tax professional. I'm not giving tax advice. What I'm trying to get at is knowing your numbers. Right. Yeah. And, 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 trying to get across that these things change all the time. And so we want to have a good relationship with the professionals in our life that are helping yeah, us, right? Absolutely. So that we know what it is that we're planning for, for the year. So we know our numbers, we know what, um, what, how to change our system, how to change our process throughout the year to give us the best benefit, you know, the best financial yeah. benefit. There's a lot to keep track of. And I've been uh, licensed in up to 34 states. And so mm-hmm. that means 34 different states worth of rules and regulations and so even though the majority of my business might come from states like uh, texas and tennessee and virginia and the carolinas and stuff like that um, i've still got to know what what's going on in arizona and pennsylvania i've still Mm got to know what's going on in maryland i've still got to know what's going on in kentucky you know these different things Uh, it's a lot of um and i may i may have to look it up you know if i've got somebody just a one-off in Kentucky, I may have to go and look up a, a bit of information there to make sure that I'm putting everybody in their best possible position for that year. And that that's a lot of extra work. It doesn't, you don't have to pay for that. That's my job. Right. I get paid by the insurance company, not people I work with. The insurance yeah. companies are the ones who pay me. So yeah, you definitely got to keep a, a good relationship. And it, it that goes beyond just when you sign up too, because I'm also going to make sure that if you get a big medical bill, that you're not getting overbilled. You would be surprised. Um, a lot of these ER doctors in big hospitals, especially on nights and holidays and weekends, uh, there's there's ER doctors that can't get a good shift anywhere else. They've had too many problems in the past. And so the only time they ever really work is when no one else wants to work. Holidays, weekends, nights. And you might come in with a broken finger and leave with a bill for a level one trauma. Like, you know, like they were putting your guts back together or something. No, right. broken thumb. And you shouldn't be paying for level one trauma. Your mm-hmm. health insurance company watches out for that somewhat because they don't want to overpay. But really, it comes down to you. Are you the one paying attention to your bill? Well, if you look at it, you look at your bill and you're like, this is all Greek to me. I, I can't make out heads or tails, whatever they, any of this stuff. Send it to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't care. I don't care what's on it or what happened. My job is not to worry about that. My job is to make sure you're not overpaying uh, that that hospital or that you know sketchy fly by night ER doc that can't get a job anywhere else. I'm trying to help people, and uh, you know throughout the years things change, and you want to make sure that you're talking to your health insurance agent. Don't lose my number. If anybody's <laughs> going to try to get your bill lower, it's me. Why? Well, I want you to be in the best possible position. I also might want a referral or two, and so if I do a really good job for you, I'm going to get those referrals coming in. Right? I don't have to spend any money to get those. I just have to spend my time and I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So yes, definitely keep a good relationship with anybody who helps you manage and protect your money and your assets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I help my clients and, and, you know, because I've been going through the medical thing, people I've been sharing out in the world, like real time, you know, when my bills come in, how I've negotiated, how much I've saved, how I'm paying, like sharing this, because I want people to see that I'm not above this. You know, I am using these same principles and I'm doing the same things that I teach my clients to do. And, and, um, I always tell my clients too, don't lose my number just because we're not necessarily working, you know, one-to-one together right now, doesn't mean that, um, I'm not going to help you in the future should something come up. Right. And so it's really about developing that close relationship with the people that we work with because we care about them and so um yeah so much great information today ben thank you for uh you know sharing all of this with me and having this you know conversation because i think it's one to be had so 
I think you just hit the, the nail on the head when you said, because we care. There's a lot of different jobs I can do. A lot. I mean, I'm, I'm qualified for a lot of things. I got two degrees. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. They're both worthless now because I don't use, use them that much. <laughs> but I could do a lot of different. I could sell used cars. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I chose health insurance over a lot of different different professions because I get to help people. My dad, uh, God rest his soul, was a pastor. And so, and that my whole life, he's been a pastor. And so um, we, our whole family always approaches life as servant or -hmm. servant leaders. And so we want to serve people. We know how good that feels and we know how much that helps. Mm -hmm. And so do I get paid well to do it? Sometimes, yeah, not all the time, but sometimes. (laughs) But I want to help people. And this job gives me the opportunity to not only help you get in the best position with your health insurance, but also as those bills stack up from different things that come up in life, I can be there to help you get those lowered too. Uh, you've been taken advantage of by somebody who's prescribed, you know, sort of super expensive medicine and it, uh, maybe there's a generic that's better. I can help you find that information. Or maybe it's just going to be a, an expensive drug no matter what. Let's look at some Canadian pharmacies or let's talk to my friend down in uh, Florida that she... Uh, she helps people at a certain income level. As long as you're below that level, she can get the medicines for you for free. Just about any medicine you can think of, she can get it for you for free from the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so little things like that, anything that I can do to save a buck or two for you, that makes me feel good. I really do care about that. And I care about the people I serve. Right. Um, so yeah, it's 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 what's that's what it's about. I get paid to do it. Yeah, but I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't care. It's too right. much work to do it for <laughs> For the amount I get paid, I have to actually care about doing it. Right. No, agreed, agreed. And, and you know, I think to just add into that a little bit that I think I came from a place where I didn't feel seen and I didn't feel supported. And I just needed to feel like somebody was in my corner to, you know, to have my back. And um, I do that now not to save people, but just so you kind of feel like, yeah, you know what, Sarah's here to help, you know, like I've actually got somebody that's non-judgmental, that's, you know, been through the ringer with a lot of stuff, right. That, um, I can trust. And, um, I have said, you know, I do make money at this. We want to make money. I want people, I want everybody to be making gobs and gobs of money, right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, But I do this not for the money. That's not my number one reason. Do I appreciate it? Heck yes, I do. Because you know what? I like money and it affords me to be able to travel more and everything. And I'm not shy about that. But I do it because I care and I want people to feel seen and heard and not judged in the situation that they find themselves in with money. And so um, then we make a great team. Um, So thank you for sharing this information. And um, you know, in all the notes and everything, I'll put your website, phone number, everything. So people can get in contact with you. Yeah. And all just right. to be clear, you can talk to me. I don't have anything I have to sell you. If, if all we do is exchange information and you get a better idea of the landscape for health insurance for yourself. Great. Maybe in a few years, you'll be ready for it. I know not everybody has the money to spend right now on an insurance plan that checks all the right boxes for their situation. Maybe right now, all you need is something to to cover the major stuff. Great. I'll point you in the right direction, whether or not I sell a product, because I just want to make sure you're taken care of. So don't be afraid to call. Don't be afraid to email me. I don't have a machine that follows up constantly and beats up your phone with emails, texts, and phone calls. I'm more of a laid back, uh, let people know what I do, and then let them contact me when they're ready type of guy. I get fewer sales that way, but the sales I get are people that stick with me because they like that I don't beat up their phone with constant reminders to buy, 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 right? (laughs) A little more low key, a little more low key. Right. I appreciate that. Awesome. Well, such a great- Thanks so much for having me. This has been a great, this is the second time we've gotten together on the camera and it's always a lot of fun for me too. I mean, I put everything else aside so I could do this. I've been sick. I told you that before we started- and I had enough energy to do one thing today. And this is the thing I wanted to do. So oh, I appreciate well, you giving me the opportunity to talk to people uh, in your audience. Uh, I'd love to get to know some more of them a, a little bit better and uh, help them get 
the best possible, you know, situation with their health insurance as well. Well, I appreciate that. And thank you for making this your one thing today, because it wasn't yeah. just for me, it was for a lot of other people to, to get, uh, you know, to gain some information and some yeah. insight. So that's the important part. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.